Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Two Bold Nerds. I'm Richard Chapman. This is Mike Myers. We're going to spend some time talking about Patch Tuesday and updating uh, critical. What did you say? Did you already break in on me? I did. I just said patching. Patching, patching. It's fun. Right. I could say plastics, but <laughs> nobody would get to that movie reference. It's called The Graduate, no. people. Watch a movie. Ah, yes. Okay. All right. I, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. This is Robinson. Mrs. Yeah, dude, I can quote old movies all day long. Probably just about anything that comes out of my mouth you could you could attribute to a movie, couldn't you? I think that is a bit of a trend that we do. But we're talking about <laughs> patching, mon frere. And in particular, Updating. so patching. I want to talk more about not so much why we patch. I think everybody understands that part. But, you know, to me, I get frustrated by the patching process in general. So, you know, Microsoft invented Patch Tuesday when? 20 some odd years ago, I guess now. I forget. Yeah, what but actually about that, 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, first of all, is how bad of an indictment is it of your company that you have to fix it every week? You know, <laughs> if, well, if, I, if I, mean, I did that with my little sports car, that'd probably be a bad sign, right? The Jaguar well, people I, would have an issue. Listen, I've I've always subscribed to the idea that as 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 much testing as you could possibly do in a an environment where you're trying to test different configurations and things like that, you are never going to get the amount of variations that you find when you release software to the to the world. I mean, everybody's computer is configured differently with different applications, different hardware components. There's just, unfortunately, there's no test subjects like everybody in the world, which is a horrible way to think. But I do think there's a certain amount that you just can't test. So there's a need for updating and patching. It has to happen. I'm not right? arguing that point, Richard. I, okay. I get I get frustrated, especially I'm going to pick on Microsoft Windows right now. Because you I'm know, okay Microsoft, with that. <laughs> you remember when Microsoft Windows used to be an operating system? You know, <laughs> I, listen, we used to refer to Windows as bloatware. I mean, that's that's exactly what it was well, called. It's, it's, and it probably it's still worse than that it. now. It's, it's most of the updates you're seeing. You know, if you read through the knowledge base articles on whatever patch it might be, time and time again, it's more telemetry. You know, we're making this easier for you. And no, you're not. You're giving yourself <laughs> more telemetry. And and you know, and while we're talking about that. I want to complain about one more thing is that we've had now 15 years of aggressive telemetry and customization and all that stuff. And the only thing I get are ads on my browsers for stuff I've already bought. I mean, come on. I mean, you would think that at this point in, in return for losing all this privacy that they would be like going, Hey man, you know, here's something that you might really be interested in. And here's a 10% discount code, you know? I, maybe, maybe Richard, I reduced. Where, maybe. I actually use. I use that Capital One add-on. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I do. I use it as well too. Yeah. I do, and it's actually saved me some money. Uh, Agree. It, am I am I sacrificing my uh, uh, privacy to a degree? I am, but at least that's something I agreed with, as opposed to Microsoft Windows arbitrary patch Tuesdays that are like, ah, oh, we're now going to open up. You know. Uh, ports uh, 22,000 to 24,000 for, you know, inspecting the position of all the, your icons on your desktop. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but it's not all just for that. I mean, a lot of, there is some security in there as well, too. Of course. I no, mean, of course there is. Yeah. yeah right. And that's, that's kind of where I generally tend to focus on it. I mean, looking back, you know, years and years and years ago, I remember when Patch Tuesday would come around, there was no desire to, to load those patches right off the bat. Because there were there had been so many issues with patches and updates and things like that in the past that everybody was afraid to load them right off the bat because they felt like as soon as they loaded it they were going to have you know crashes and and all kinds of issues with their machines. So but did, Richard, there I, was I, a particularly bad service pack. Remember service packs? Service yep, yep. pack with a patch Tuesday that uh, basically locked up every Windows machine on Earth. I, I don't remember. I used to remember the knowledge base article off the top of my head, but yeah. Uh, and, 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 but you got to keep in mind, even that stuff back then, automated updates were not the norm. You had to turn on automated updates. Now right. with Windows 10 and now Windows 11, not only are they automated, but you can't do anything other than delay them a little bit. Exactly. You know, and uh, I don't know. Risky stuff. And now, worse than this, now you're telling me what, why are you, you're talking about Chrome patches. On, on your blog. First of all, what is Chrome? 
Do, do you actually use a Chrome browser? I do. I do. I, I listen. I I I I will fully admit that I I do use Chrome. Um, I do use Firefox as well too. Um, I honestly just found that I had more issues with Firefox specifically when you know accessing certain websites and and things like that. So I I, I generally tend to go with Chrome. But I, I'm very diligent about keeping it up to date. If I see a, a release, or sometimes even before a, a news article or, or any sort of notification about a release, I'll, I'll pop over to the settings and go ahead and drop down uh, into the settings menu and say, okay, what you know, what version am I running? Check and see if there's a new version and, and let it update. Uh, there are a lot of security updates that do occur in Chrome. There are, uh, because, there are. because of you know browser extensions and add-ons and you know different attack vectors that are being uh, utilized every single day in the in the world. So yeah, I mean we almost ought to have another two BN episode on security and privacy and what are you actually paying for? I uh, <laughs> I avoid Google products now. Um, I, I have my old Desweds at gmail.com. You've heard of Desweds, right? No. You, you got a keyboard in front of you, right? Yeah. Type the, Don't actually type it, but hover over it. You ready? Desweds. Yeah. D-E-S-W-E-D-S. -E -S, Desweds. Okay. It, it's a kinetic acronym, Richard. So okay. I say, look, here's how I type Desweds. Look, look at my hand. Look at my hand. Look at my hand. Look up here. Yeah, I'm looking. That's I'm looking. it. <laughs> I don't even have to take my hand off the mouse. I just Desweds. That's where that came from like 30 years ago. Uh, anyway, I, I, I sidebar, but um, I, I I get nervous. I don't want to do a big story on that. Uh, but uh, like I, I, I barely use any Google products anymore. Uh, I like Firefox and I will be the first one to admit it. Firefox definitely needs a little bit of patching. And Firefox is also, it's kind of like a Harley Davidson. It's a fun ride, but you're going to have to put a wrench on it more often than most other motorcycles, you know? But it sounds good and looks good, right? Hey, pocket a pocket a pocket a right? You know, I mean, <laughs> potato, right. potato, potato, potato. Uh, so, but like with Chrome, and I do have Chrome. I don't use it very often. Uh, mm -hmm. But actually, my, my uh, fallback is Edge now. No, it's not. I was just about to say. I was. I was literally just about to say. Can we agree on one thing that we look? Don't if you're going to pay for, if you're going to pay for the patch me. anyway. <laughs> it, it'll it'll patch it and but i again i do have chrome uh uh but uh i mean i assume that chrome patch is the same way firefox does either you do a manual patch or you schedule and configure automated patching is that accurate with chrome you you know it's funny that, that you actually mentioned that so a lot of times i'm so on top of it i, I pretty much manually go in and, and adjust it or you know uh, update it um i actually don't know if there is an automation for the patch update i guarantee I've, you there is you probably have to go through google's be. account to get to it but uh um, probably yeah but uh yeah i so i i and i you know chrome is fast i'll give you that it's a very fast browser uh but uh you know, so the patching process is now overwhelming, you know. Uh, it used to be you patched your OS, maybe occasionally, you know, by Office, when I actually installed Office before it became software as a service, uh, there'd be some patching there. But uh, now I got to tell you, I get overwhelmed and, you know, throw the phone in there on top of it. And uh, I, I just pretty much go to automatic and pray. And uh you know, I've, I haven't I've had a problem for a while. I've gotten to a point to where when, when Patch Tuesday rolls around, um, I will generally try to update my Windows machine, update Chrome. Um, I will also, on my Android phone, I'll, I'll actually go into my app store and go ahead and have it update any of the apps that are on my phone as well. Uh, and of course, you know, the OS itself on the phone, but that doesn't happen as frequently, but. Uh, I guess I've just kind of made it like a monthly thing. So, but that's kind of what Microsoft did too, right? A yeah, no, thing. but the thing was that it was just, it used to be that I would manually patch everything. And mm -hmm. I'm, folks, I got to be careful. When I'm telling you manually patch, today, when you say manually patch, that just means you'll, you click on upgrade now. Now I'm talking about where you used to have to download an executable and run it. And, you know, and then you would go through and check whatever else is happening out in the world, see how other people are successful with that particular patch and da, 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 da. And then you went, okay. 
<laughs> but if I did that with every OS and every app on every platform that I have, I would be doing nothing but maintaining patch stuff. So actually, this is an interesting question, Richard. I, if this is wrong, just correct me. But within a SOC scenario, do Patch Tuesdays create interesting times for you guys? Or do vulnerabilities... Yeah, because of exploit, I'm because sorry? Because of exploit Wednesdays. <laughs> I've never heard the term exploit Wednesday before. Is that really a thing? Yeah, absolutely. Ab exploit Wednesday. Uh, basically, whenever a patch comes out, if there's a, a new patch that rolls out on Tuesday, um, especially if it's a security patch, uh, usually on Wednesdays, you will see an increase or a, an uptick in attacks based on those security flaws or those security vulnerabilities. Now, Max, so, I'm reading right yeah. now. Look at that. Richard Chapman, you taught the old dog a new term. <laughs> Exploit <laughs> Wednesday. I love that. Everybody, well, else, I mean, everybody yeah. else listening to this is like, oh, who didn't know that? You know, it's like, oh. Nah, nah. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, not every security vulnerability is really known um, when it's getting patched. You know, sometimes those are a little more secretive um, and the application can be updated, upgraded and patched before everybody knows about it. But the the, the reason why patch or uh, exploit Wednesday is a big deal is because the implementation of that patch during that time frame. How long does it take that IT team to get those patches rolled out? So attackers will will attempt to utilize those uh, exploits to take advantage of those vulnerabilities as quickly as they can and just kind of catch the low hanging fruit before the patches sure. get up. No, I get the idea. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. there you go, man. We should be. Uh, so I, I had a feeling there'd be something like that. Exploit Wednesday. Thank you for that, That's Richard. Good. I like that one. You're man. welcome. My pleasure. It's always like it's always nice to be able to pass on a nugget of knowledge to to you know my senior bald nerd here. <laughs> Sorry. You, you don't have to call me senior bald nerd. Senior, just... you are. Yeah, I mean senior does apply as well. Yeah, yeah. We need senior. your sombrero though. You got to wear your sombrero. As long as you don't call me uh, El Guapo. <laughs> that's never, that's handsome. Never. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen. Thank you, thank you everybody for uh, spending some time with us. Mike, as always, been a pleasure. Uh, love spending time with you. Have a good rest of the day. We'll see everybody later. Bye, guys. If you like Two Bold Nerds, check out our entire playlist right here. It's a lot of fun. We'll see you there.